Hey you, I heard you're having some trouble getting to sleep. I'm gonna help you out, okay? First, I need you to turn off the lights and get comfortable. Get your favorite pillow in just the right spot. Don't look at your phone, I know it's tempting, but it's time to let go of the day. You've done all you can and I'm really proud of you. You deserve to rest now. Let's take a long deep breath together, in through the nose and out through the mouth. One more. Good. Now close those eyes and let me help you get to sleep. Today, I'm going to bore you to sleep with a ceiling fan installation guide. And I recently had to install this in my house. And I almost fell asleep reading the instructions. So. I thought it might be helpful for you. Let's start with the table of contents. Safety information is on page two. Package contents is on page four. Hardware contents, that's page five. Preparation, also page five. Initial installation is page 6. Wiring is page 8. Final installation, page 10. Operating instructions, page 15. Care and maintenance, page 16. Troubleshooting, page 17. Limited life warranty, page 18. And replacement parts list, page 19. Let's read the safety information. Do not discard fan carton or foam inserts. Should this fan need to be returned to the factory for repairs, it must be shipped in its original packaging to ensure proper protection against damage that might exceed the initial cause for return. Make sure all electrical connections comply with local codes, ordinances, and the National Electrical Code and ANSI slash NFPA 70-1999. Hire a qualified electrician or consult a do-it-yourself wiring handbook if you are unfamiliar with installing electrical wiring. Make sure the installation site you choose allows a minimum clearance of 7 feet from the blades to the floor and at least 30 inches from the end of the blades to any obstruction. After you install the fan, make sure all connections are secure to prevent the fan from falling. The net weight of this fan, including light kit, is 13.22 pounds. Let's move on to the package contents. So you get one motor housing, one mounting bracket, one motor assembly, one light kit 
fitter. One glass shade, two pull chain extensions, five blades, one finial plate, one finial five blade arms, one cap, two bulbs, ten motor screws plus one extra, which I actually needed because one of them fell on the ground and I couldn't find it after. So shout out to the one extra. You get also 10 5.4 millimeter lock washers plus one extra. Two hex nuts. One lock washer. One rubber washer. Four motor housing mounting screws. Four mounting bracket flat washers. Four motor housing lock washers. Four mounting bracket nuts. And three switch housing caps. When I was reading this for the first time and installing it, I thought I was reading a Dr. Seuss book because all of these items sound like Dr. Seuss made them up. Next page. We're already on page five. This is the preparation. So, before beginning assembly of the product, make sure all parts are present. Compare parts with package contents list. If any part is missing or damaged, do not attempt to assemble the product. Estimated assembly time is 120 minutes. I'm not sure why they don't just say two hours, but that's fine. Tools required for assembly that are not included. Electrical tape, Phillips screwdriver, pliers, safety glasses, stepladder, and wire strippers. Helpful tools not included. An AC tester light. A tape measure. Do-it-yourself wiring handbook. And wire cutters. This is the initial installation. Step one, turn off circuit breakers and wall switch to the fan supply line leads. Danger, failure to disconnect power supply prior to installation may result in serious injury or death. Let me just say, this is really important. We have this old story in my family about a time when my dad was installing a ceiling fan like this and he forgot to turn off the power supply. And he got electrocuted and he fell off the top of the ladder 
landed on his back. He's fine now, don't worry. Miraculously, he was not too badly injured, but if you are actually <laughs> installing a fan, I don't know why this is the video you're listening to, but if you ever do install a, flan, a fan or anything electrical, just don't mess around, please very scary. Okay, thanks for coming to my electricity TED talk. Let's move on to step two. This fan can be mounted as a flush mount on a regular no slope ceiling only. Check to make sure blades will be at least 30 inches from any obstruction. Step 3. Remove all mounting bracket nuts and mounting bracket flat washers from mounting bracket. Step 4. Secure mounting bracket to outlet box using screws spring washers and flat washers provided with the outlet box. Note, it is very important that you use proper hardware when installing the mounting bracket as this will support the fan. Step 5. Remove motor screws and 5.4 millimeter lock washers from underside of motor and save for blade arm attachment later on. If there are plastic motor blocks installed with the motor screws and 5.4 millimeter lock washers, discard the plastic motor blocks. Step 6. Slide the slot in the bar at the top of the motor assembly onto the J-hook on the mounting bracket to support the fan during wiring. Important. Do not use the end of the bar on the motor assembly with the small round hole to hang the motor assembly on the mounting bracket. This is the wiring portion. This part is really boring, so if you haven't fallen asleep yet, I think this will do the trick. Of course, we have a lot of warnings. We're dealing with electricity and wires, and it's warranted. So let's get started. Warning, to reduce the risk of fire, electrical shock, or personal injury, Wire connectors provided with this fan are designed to accept only one 12 gauge house wire and two lead wires from the fan. If your house wire is larger than 12 gauge or there's more than one house wire to connect to the corresponding fan lead wires, Consult an electrician for the proper size wire connectors to use. Caution. Be sure outlet box is properly grounded and that a ground, green or bare, wire is present. Warning. If house wires are different colors than referred to in the following steps, stop immediately. A professional electrician is recommended to determine wiring. So here are the wiring steps. Step one, choose wiring diagram. And there's three diagrams here that fits your situation and make appropriate wiring connections as follows. Note, for each wire connection below, use one of the wire connectors making sure to screw wire connector on in a clockwise
this direction. So, the first scenario is if the fan and light controlled by pole chains and it goes connect black and blue wire from fan to black wire from ceiling connect white wire from fan to white wire from ceiling connect all ground green wires together from fan on motor assembly and mounting bracket to bare slash green wire from ceiling. This is extremely boring, isn't it? I'm almost falling asleep just reading it again. Alright, the next scenario is if the fan is controlled by a pull chain but the light is controlled by a wall switch. I think this was my scenario when I, when I was installing this. If you intend to control the fan light with a separate wall switch, connect black wire from fan to black wire from ceiling. Connect blue wire from fan to the black wire from the independent wall switch for the light. Connect white wire from fan to white wire from ceiling. Connect all ground green wires together from fan on motor assembly C and mounting bracket to bare slash green wire from ceiling. Note black wire is hot power for fan. Blue wire is hot power for light kit. White wire is common for fan and light kit. Bare slash green wire is ground. Okay, now you've got your scenario. Let's move on to step two. Wrap electrical tape, not included. And they really have to, like, rub it in. It's not included. Okay. Around each wire. Individual wire connector. Down to the wire. Warning. Make sure no bare wire or wire strands are visible after making connections. Place bare slash green and white connections on opposite side of box from the black and blue, if applicable, connections. Turn spliced slash tapped <laughs> taped wires upward and gently push wires and wire connectors into outlet box. Step three. This is just as important. Using a full range dimmer switch, not included, to control fan speed will cause a loud humming noise from fan. To reduce the risk of fire or electrical shock, do not use a full range dimmer switch to control fan speed. That's good advice, I feel like. Alright, next part is final installation. And this is where it gets really Dr. Susie. And if you haven't fallen asleep by now, I promise you, this is going to be the one. Alright. Step one. Remove motor assembly from J-hook. Align holes in motor assembly with holes in mounting bracket. Secure motor assembly with mounting bracket flat washers and mounting bracket nuts previously removed in step 3 on page 6. Step 2. Temporarily lift motor housing to mounting bracket. Determine which two motor housing mounting screws insides of mounting bracket 
align with the slotted holes in the top edge of the motor housing and partially loosen these two motor housing mounting screws. Remove the other two motor housing mounting screws and motor housing lock washers. Slide motor housing over motor assembly, aligning slotted holes in motor housing with loosened motor housing mounting screws in motor mounting bracket. Twist motor housing to lock. Reinsert the other two motor housing mounting screws along with motor housing lock washers previously removed. Tighten all motor housing mounting screws securely. That was the most Dr. Susie this thing gets. Step three, partially insert three blade screws along with three fiber blade washers into holes in blade to attach blade arm to blade. Then tighten each blade screw, starting with the one in the middle. Repeat step three with remaining blades. I'm not going to repeat step three five times. Even though I know it would probably make you go to sleep, it's going to make me go to sleep too. All right, step four. Locate motor screws and 5.4 millimeter lock washers previously removed in step Insert two motor screws along with 5.4 millimeter lock washers through one blade arm to attach blade arm to motor. Tighten motor screws securely. Repeat with remaining blade arms, making sure to completely secure each blade arm before proceeding with the next. Remove three switch housing cap screws from top, that's underlined, of the light kit fitter. <laughs> the light kit fitter just gives me giggles for some reason. Okay, let me get it together. If you wish to use the light kit, remove finial, finial plate, hex nut, and rubber washer from underlined bottom of light kit fitter. Save hardware for later use and continue to step six. And here we are at step six. Locate blue or black and white wires in switch housing of motor assembly labeled for light and remove plastic that holds these two wires together. Also, remove Molex safety caps from the bottom of blue or black and white wires. Note, it may be necessary to pull firmly in order to remove Molex safety caps. Connect white wire from switch housing to white wire from light kit fitter. Connect blue or black wire from switch housing to black wire from light kit fitter. Make sure that Molex connections are secure. Molex makes me think of an underground assembly of moles like secret agents, moles, okay. <laughs> Step seven, to attach light kit fitter to motor assembly, align holes in switch housing cap at top of light kit fitter with holes in switch housing. Make sure to align gap on the top edge of the switch housing. 
closing gap with the reverse switch on the switch housing for the correct fit. Reinsert switch housing cap screws previously removed in step 5, page 11, and tighten all switch housing cap screws securely. Step 8, simply install bulbs. Important, when you need to replace bulbs, please allow bulbs. The word bulbs is kind of funny to me. <laughs> please allow bulbs and light kit to cool down before touching the bulbs or the light kit. I can't stop laughing at the word bulbs, but that's great advice. Make sure to let those bulbs cool down. All right, step nine, locate rubber washer, hex nut, finial plate, and finial previously removed in step five, page 11. Place rubber washer inside glass shade over center hole. Align hole in center of the glass shade thre with threaded rod on light kit fitter. Allowing pull chains to come through corresponding holes in glass shade. Push up gently on glass shade until threaded rod comes through the hole. Be sure fan pull chain does not rub against the bulbs during fan operation. Secure glass shade with hex nut. Align hole in center of finial plate with threaded rod, allowing the pull chains to come through appropriate holes in the finial plate and push up. Thread center pull chain through hole in finial 